Good morning everyone! Today it's Sunday and there's a beautiful sun outside, it's a beautiful morning and I'm now going to take my best friend because we are going to Tivoli, a small town near Rome, to visit Villa d'Este and I'm really excited because I've never been there. Villa d'Este was built between 1560 and 1572 by Ippolito d'Este, the nephew of Pope Alessandro VI. And yes, at the time it was not unusual for popes to have children. Ippolito was a cardinal and the governor of Tivoli, a small town near Rome, where the villa is located. The first floor was reserved to the cardinal's apartment. He had his personal chapel, a chamber and an antechamber. These rooms were decorated with Roman statues and findings coming directly from ancient Roman villas. The lower floor contains a series of rooms, each of them decorated with a specific theme, all connected to nature, mythology and water. The rooms are less formal than those of the apartment above and they were used for receiving guests and for private moments in the life of the cardinal, like listening to music or poetry, conversation, reading and religious reflection. The great fame of Villa d'Este comes from its majestic gardens and its extraordinary system of fountains, all working entirely by the force of gravity without pumps. The Aval Fountain was one of the first fountains in the garden and among the most famous. It was designed as a water theatre by Piero Ligorio, the architect of the villa. The hundred fountains were another celebrated marvel of the gardens in the Renaissance. Actually, there are nearly 300 spots, each of them decorated with animal masks. Like every other feature of the garden, canals and the hundred fountains had their part in the symbolic plan. They represented the aqueducts the Romans built to supply water to Rome. The fountain of Rometta celebrates the city of Rome, visible in the distance behind the fountain. You can see the boat with an obelisk, symbolizing the Tiburina island in the Tiber, and the statue of Rome Triumphant. This is the Fountain of Neptune, a work created in the 20th century to replace a garden landmark which had deteriorated. The space was originally occupied by a rocky cascade, created in the 17th century by Gian Lorenzo Bernini. He designed the cascade to produce a thunderous sound of falling water. Unfortunately, the cascade was entirely neglected for two centuries, and in the 1930s, the architect Attilio Rossi created the present fountain, using what remained of Bernini's cascade. The three fish ponds crossed the garden from the fountain of Neptune, and they served originally to provide fresh fish for the table of the cardinal. 
The Fountain of the Organ is one of the most famous features of the garden, and it houses a hydraulic organ that still works today. The instrument plays thanks to a system that uses the falling water to blow air into the pipes. I just got back home and I'm really tired, it's half past 8 and um, that's it, I'm really tired but I'm so happy that I spent this day with my best friend we had a lot of fun in Tivoli, we had a walk around and we really enjoyed the guided visit to Villa d'Este it was amazing, I couldn't imagine that it, it was so big, so beautiful uh, a lot of fountains and the gardens were just breathtaking uh, but I'm sure you just saw them uh, in the previous videos I uploaded and that's it now I'm going to have dinner and then I'm going to bed so thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this Sunday vlog and see you in the next video bye